Hey everybody, Master Mom here, Amanda Olson, and I am still trying to figure out my live stream on Facebook, so I apologize for that. But this is the Wednesday morning webinar where I go over uh, topics from my book, Parenting Survival Guide. And today we are going to talk about uh, chapter 12, which it says uh, punishment or discipline or consequences, whatever word that you like to use in regards to when your child messes up and how do you correct that, what do you do? This is a topic that I have a lot of uh, experience with in my martial arts school. Discipline obviously is something that martial arts is known for. So I've been teaching children how to listen, pay attention, follow the rules, um, do what you're told the first time for a very, very, very long time. And one of the reasons that it's so important in martial arts is because it is a martial art, because you are kicking and punching or grabbing, you know, or using a nunchuck, bow staff, sometimes swords, all kinds of things like that. If you don't have a system in place for discipline, meaning when I say stop, you have to stop, then people can get hurt, you know? So knowing what to do to make sure that when you say stop, the two people sparring each other stop or a class of 50 people stop using their sword, that works in parenting too. You know, this, it's not a different system for a martial arts class as it is for uh, two siblings who are arguing or you have to say, you know, when I say stop, it's for your safety because maybe they're trying to cross a street that's not safe or you don't want them letting go of your hand in a busy parking parking lot or inside a shopping center. You know, if you say don't touch, they need to understand that that is true and they have to listen and they have to obey. So for me, having discipline in the classroom, first and foremost, is a safety issue. And with toddlers and young kids, it's very much a safety issue, being able to uh, listen and pay attention and, and listen to your rules and your voice. And then once they learn that, it doesn't really take that much punishment or disciplining from me, the higher up belts that they get or the older that they get. A lot of the kids start when they're younger, but I have teenagers that start and they have to learn that too. You know, one of the things that teenagers learn when they start a martial arts class is not talking back, not uh, goofing off. I mean, there's times for that. There's times to have fun, but then, you know, when you're wielding a pair of nunchucks around and there's people all around you, goofing off at that moment is is not allowed it's not the right time or if you're sparring and somebody you know hits you in the wrong place or hits a little too hard you know accidents happen not losing your temper not losing your self-control being able to understand that and not haul off and hit them back you know these type of things that are discipline is in place to make sure that safety is uh, always reached in the class. So even teenagers will have to come in and sometimes adults, you know, what, what is the culture here? What is the rules? You know, we don't allow uh, bad language in the classroom. And sometimes people come in and it's part of their normal, normal speech, or they're used to the, that's the way they talk at work or hanging out with their friends. But in the classroom, the martial arts classroom, it's not, it's a sign of being able to control your speech and it's not just about bad language, but what about, you know, uh, saying things that would hurt another person's uh, feelings or just things that are inappropriate to say or blurting out in the middle of a lesson, just self-control, period. So that's a little background of why I have to teach discipline and how do I do that? And then being able to put that into a mom for a mom and dad or grandparents aunt and uncle caregivers of all sorts how do we learn from that if you can keep 50 kids disciplined with nunchucks and nobody's breaking the rules why can't we as parents do it with you know one two three four five kids 
in your home. So I obviously haven't learned how to do it with dogs. Many pearls here for, yeah. So she likes, she likes this time, I think, because I'm sitting in this chair and she's got my lap. So I still haven't learned that with dogs. She starts puppy training pretty soon. But uh, for kids, kids, I know. Teens, I know. All right, so that's what we're going to talk, spend a little bit of time talking about today. So let's see about sharing the screen here. This is just a slide from the chapter on the book. Sorry. Okay, there we go. All right, so chapter 12, punishment. So when we say punishment, uh, punishment is part of the disciplinary process. So there has to be uh, a consequence. So this little girl looks like she's not very happy with this <laughs> consequence that's coming up. But the quote we have from Sean Covey is, uh, we are free to choose our past, but we can't choose the consequences that come with them. So when a child learns that they are the ones that are in charge of the consequences of their life, be it good or bad, that gives them a sense of control, which is important. People need to be, you know, feel like they have some control and, and children, you know, to a point need to have that sense too, that otherwise they have no confidence and they never learn how to exist in society if they don't have some choices. And as they age and get older and become more responsible, they get more choices. But to understand that the choice I make sets me on this path of consequence or this path of consequence uh, is an important lesson. What that does for you, as it says in the next sentence there, it, if they are the ones choosing the consequences and they are aware of that, that takes you out of the, the whole blame and the disciplining. And sometimes, you know, parents, we feel guilty. We feel as if, you know, I hate punishing my kid. You know, I feel like the bad guy or it seems I'm always, you know, yelling at them or, you know, I just want, I just want to be the nice guy. And I understand all of that. And part of the way that you take that out of the equation is to help your child understand that there are consequences for bad behavior. And when they have bad behavior, they choose to not follow the rule or to not listen to you or not do what they're told, then they, they have chosen the consequence. Not you. Your choice is always to have fun, always to have, you know, the ice cream, the free time, the uh, play the game, the smiles, the laughter. Yes, you get to do that. Yes, you get to do this. You know, that's that's your choice as a parent. And it's mine as an instructor that, you know, the, the class always gets to play the game at the end, or you always get the reward of the stripe or the new belt, you know, because you you made the right choices and you put in the work. So as a, as a parent, it's the same thing. You know, I want, I want to have a happy and harmonious home. I want to let my kids have a good time. That's what we want as parents, just like I want as a martial arts instructor. But sometimes there has to be that lesson, that discipline, that even punishment or negative consequences for behavior that doesn't help you reach those goals. And if the goal is to have a happy and harmonious home, then sometimes we have to step aside, take the time to do the hard work, the disciplining, so that that can happen in the future. And I know sometimes parents, we might be right in the middle of it. We might be right in the middle of the eight-year-old or the 12-year-old, the three-year-old. But if we don't take the time to teach that discipline and teach children that there are consequences for their action, both good and bad, as they get older, it's going to become more and more difficult um, because the consequences get worse. The consequences for not following the rules, 
you know, they're driving, they have uh, opportunity for substance abuse or promiscuity, not making the right decisions at work could cost them the job. The consequence, the long term consequences of not disciplining your children and helping them understand the consequences of their action uh, can be extremely detrimental for for them in the future. So taking the time to quote unquote be the bad guy, if you will, in their younger years will pay huge dividends in their life and your life in the future. So one of the ways that I try to help parents understand when they're disciplining, they are not being the bad guy. You are not the mean parent. None of that. If anything, it's, it's the, quite the opposite. You love them enough to make sure that they understand boundaries and they understand how to get along in society. They have, the first place they learn that is how do I get along with my family and with the family team? And remember, parents, you are the boss of that team. You are the coach. So they have to learn how to respect authority and you are the authority. So you, you not being the bad guy is the first mental block, I think sometimes that we as parents need to overcome. The children have to know the rules. So you do have to explain those to them. And sometimes those rules are behaviors. Uh, we're not allowed to like this little girl stomp our foot and put on the pouty face and um, say no to you as the parent. That is a breaking the rules. That's a behavior that's not allowed. And they also need to know what are the consequences for that. So if, if they act out like this, what happens? Hopefully they do not get their way, all right? You know, it needs to be some sort of timeout, loss of privilege, um, chore. And we've talked about those uh, many times, what should the consequences be? And when they start to realize if I do this, this is what happens, they start to realize that they have a choice. You know, I can go to the lesson or go to the practice willingly and everybody's happy in the home, or I can throw a fit and be angry and, you know, cause everyone to be upset. And now I still have to go to the practice and then when I get home, I'm in timeout. As opposed to, I may not want to go right now, but I know that's what I'm supposed to do. And if I go, I will not have to be in timeout when I get home. My parents will be happy with me. Life will be better if I do what I'm supposed to do at home. So they need to learn that there are those paths. I can take the easy way, which is do what I'm told, or I can take the hard way, still have to do what I'm told, and then there's gonna be negative consequences. And see, that is a choice that is, you're not making that choice as the parent. The child is making that choice. So oftentimes in my class, if, if a child has to be put in timeout or we use push-ups or some sort of you know, wall squats or something like that as a you know, discipline for, behave, for uh, bad behavior, I will tell the child, you know, I really wanted you to be able to play the game today, but because of your behavior, you've chosen timeout. I wish you hadn't chosen timeout. Or you're not following the rules with our nunchucks. You know, when I say stop, you're supposed to stop and you're not. So I'm going to take the nunchucks and you have to do 10 push-ups. I'm sorry that you chose not to do nunchucks today. And I'm sorry that you chose to have to do push-ups instead. So as the instructor, as the disciplinarian, as the authority, I'm not the bad guy. I'm letting them do nunchucks. I'm letting them come to class and train and practice and, and play the game at the end. They're the ones that have chosen the punishment. They're the ones that have chosen not to follow the rules and therefore 
they have chosen it to be in timeout or do push-ups or whatever the consequence is. So that takes a whole lot of pressure off us as parents when we realize that the children are the ones making these choices. So how do we set that up? Well, we, we have to identify, first of all, what is the behavior or what is the rule that keeps getting broken or the behavior that is causing conflict or definitely causing chaos in your home or getting you upset or always making you late because of this, that, or the other, identify what that is. And then go after correcting that behavior. You know, it's not, my child never listens. My child is bad. They never do what they to are told. It's really not, often it's not that broad. You can bring it down to, okay, um, they always delay getting ready for school and that makes us late and that makes us unhappy. <laughs> All right, so let's look at that behavior and say, what can we put in place that will correct that behavior? So you can say, Johnny, this is what's happening every morning. We have to change it. Here's what I want to happen. If this doesn't happen, here's the consequence. Here's the negative consequence. If it does happen, here's the positive consequence. And that formula can be used for every behavior that you're trying to correct or guide your child into you know, good behavior. Here's what's happening. Here's what I want to happen. If this happens, here's the negative consequence. If this happens, here's the positive consequence. It doesn't, and it doesn't always have to be a, a reward. You may start with that, especially with younger kids, you know, a sticker chart, something like that. You had a good day. You get five good days in a row, you get this. But with your older child, it could just be, I'm not upset with you. <laughs> We're gonna have a nice, you know, a nice morning, less chaos, less yelling, less stress. That that can definitely be a reward. You know, so you kind of have to look at what is the behavior? Does it does this is this a huge behavior change? Are we really gonna have to reward this to create a new positive habit? Uh, is this just a minor thing that's causing us, you know, you keep forgetting to take out the trash on Tuesday night? And then we have all of this trash for a week. Is it something kind of small that we need to just set up something easy to, to correct, remembering what your chore is and what day of the week it is and you know that sort of thing? Or is it something big like you're stomping your foot at me and you're saying no? That would, that would be a big bad behavior that we definitely need to change quickly might take some extra reward on the front end to turn that around or it could take a bigger punishment you know no screen time you know no you can't go outside and play with your friends today because of your behavior you're going to be sitting in the corner so think about you know the the consequence does need to fit the the crime if you will all right but again, I'll just reiterate very simply, identify the behavior you want to change. It's just a picture girl, right? She's not really a mean kid. Identify the behavior that you want to change. What is the consequence for good behavior? What is the consequence for bad behavior? And then letting your child know that they, have the, they are the ones that have chosen either the reward or they've chosen the punishment takes you out of the picture. You're not the bad guy. The child made their own choice. All right. And then that brings us to the last statement here that teaches them to take responsibility for their own actions that they do have control over. Uh, oftentimes they can have control over cause and effect. You know, if I turn my homework in on time and I always do my homework, chances are I'm going to make better grades in school. I'm not going to get in trouble at home. You know, they become, they learn that cause and effect. If I take the extra time to study for the test, I make a better grade. I start making better grades. I start possibly getting scholarships. 
you know, if nothing else, I've learned something. I've learned some self-discipline <laughs> and I can use that in my life. Self-discipline is a wonderful thing to learn. And by setting your child up in this sort of programming of cause and effect of they are responsible for choosing their path, they start understanding self-discipline. And that's what you really want is you want your child to be able to, to exhibit self-discipline as they start going to friends' houses, spending, you know, more, more, less self-direct, or excuse me, less uh, uh, time where people are watching them, you know, hovering over them and they can work independently more. You know, I know that a child has learned self-discipline in my martial arts class when I can say, go work on your, on your own. And I look over there and they're not goofing off. They're actually working and they're training and they're practicing. Or I can put two kids together and say, you know, I want you guys to work together on this. Some kids will start laughing and giggling and not uh, not working. And some kids will get to training and you know which ones have learned self-discipline that way. And you can help, you know, reward the ones who are showing good self-discipline and then correct the ones who haven't quite got there yet. Whether that means that, okay, you can't work alone. You're going to need to have, a, have an instructor watching over you. You know, that that works in the classroom, it works at home, you know? So uh, I'm sorry, you're, you really can't be allowed to watch TV in your room because you make poor choices. You're gonna have to watch TV in the family room where I can watch what you're watching. You know, so when a child gets that self-discipline down, they also get more freedoms. This is something that you can start very early by using this method and helping them gain that self-discipline you can also start it even if, even at teenagers if you if you just a little late to this discipline party um just be very clear be very fair remember if, if you've let them get away with something for 13 years and now all of a sudden you aren't going to you've got to give them time to adjust and you've got to make sure that you set the plan in motion and the hard part especially if it's something you're trying to change in a 13 year old. The hard part is you have to follow through because you're used to a certain pattern of behavior yourself. So as you're trying to change the behavior of your child, correct a behavior, we have to take responsibility as parents and say, I need to correct my behavior too. I've got to fix this. You know, I, I often tell instructors in training when they are training, if your class isn't disciplined, what are you doing wrong? Don't yell at the kids and get upset with them. Say, okay, my structure's not right. I haven't conveyed to them what the you know, requirements are for good discipline in the class. What have you done that needs to be corrected in order to help your students correct? And you know, this, this week's kids have been starting back to school. So uh, they're a little excited you know, more than usual. There's some of them are tired. Maybe they're a little cranky. There's a lot of things that you've got to uh, understand that's happening from the beginning in a week like this, where all the kids all at once are going through a major, you know, schedule change, adjustment, meeting new people, teachers, lessons, school, homework, all that. Yeah, they're going to come in a little different to your class. So knowing that ahead of time, you can set things up for, you know, maybe these kids need a, a little bit of get some energy out right away in my class. So we're gonna you know, do a lot of very active things quickly to help them get the wiggles out and then we can get focused on the lesson. You know, pre-frame. Guys, I have, a really, I have a really fun skill drill for us at the end of class today. It's like a game. And if everybody listens closely to our lessons today and practices really hard, we'll have time for that at the end. So a little pre-framing. You can do the same thing at home. Before you go to the grocery store, if this has been the issue, pre-frame. All right, if, if you, you know what I expect from you at the grocery store, if you behave well, here will be your reward at the end and whatever you have set for that. But you kind of pre-frame and remind them, here's the behavior that I want you to have. If you do it, here's your reward. Follow through with that. Don't forget to follow through with the reward too, all right? So not just following through with the consequence, 
but make sure you follow through with your reward as well. That's very, very important for the child to build trust in you that, okay, if I do all this behaving stuff, <laughs> you said you would. So we do want to make sure that our word is true. All right. So that is, that is all that I have for you today on that chapter in the book. I hope that it was helpful. I hope that, you know, you don't feel like the bad guy because you're not, you're the parent. <laughs> all right. And not all children are going to behave all the time. In fact, zero of them are going to behave all the time. Even if you have really good kids that just are naturally compliant and, you know, do what they're told and that sort of thing, there still are going to be times where, you know, their behavior isn't exactly what you want for them. Maybe it's a confidence issue. So you can kind of use the building confidence, get up there, get in the class, you know, you can do this. Um, a lot of first days for kids of school this week, a lot of new changes um, that they're doing, if they're doing the things and they're pushing forward and they're changing and they're growing, you know, reward them for that. Let them know that they are doing a good job. Everybody likes a pat on the back and kids are no different. All right, Master Mom, subscribe, please share, comment, like the video if this is helpful. It, it certainly helps me get the word out and I appreciate you. Don't forget to stop by. If you don't already have a copy of the uh, Parenting Survival Guide, please stop by Olson's or message me and I can get one to you. You guys have a great day and thanks again for listening.